Now we go back and you can see our edge has gotten just that little bit thicker that we want. And again, this is how all things hollow are made. Pitchers, bowls, vases, huh. mugs. Just like this, we'll dump that excess clay out on the inside. You can see it hollows it out on the inside. And what we'll do is we'll just turn this over. And we'll let this drain overnight. We'll just let it sit and dry out overnight. It'll take about 24 hours for that to set. Give or take a few because there again, heat and humidity are always a, always a factor when doing clay. So we'll let that one sit overnight. I do have one that's ready to be opened. Mm -hmm. Now, as you notice in that one, they, they're, they're both the same mold, but we like to get more than one piece in a mold whenever we can. It's much easier to turn one of these over than it is to have to turn three separate ones. When I open this one up, it is truly a Pocono product as we have three little deer. Aww. Now, as long as we keep our molds clean, we don't have to treat them with anything. We keep them nice and clean and dry. Our wear will pop right out with absolutely no problems. Mm -hmm. If a piece is not ready to come out of the mold, like you saw me struggle with that one, yeah. I knew that one would come out. But if I tried to force it, you'll end up bending it out of shape. It's not ready to release from the mold yet. It needs to dry a little bit longer. If I leave them in the mold a little bit too long, maybe I forget about this and I don't come back here till Friday or Saturday to open it. The clay is going to continue to dry. It's going to shrink eventually, being the constriction of the mold. It will start to form stress cracks and you will end up losing the piece. So you, you have to be vigilant. You have to check your clay all the time, just about every day for your pieces. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're ready and sometimes they're not. I have another mold here. This one also contains two pieces. I know it's hard. I see your face. It's always hard to know what's in these little blocks. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can see we have weird little codes written on everything with numbers and pencil marks so that we know what they are because you don't know from the outside what a piece is. Mm -hmm. Now when I open this one up, we have two pieces again and they're actually going to work together. We have a little body and a little head. We're gonna get him all cleaned up and get him painted and glazed oh, and he's going to become our little headless Hector. <laughs> now we can put his head on and he can run going that way for a while. But when you get tired of him running in that direction, you can take his head off and he can go the other way. <laughs> I always like to say that the little guy never knows which way, never knows whether he's coming or going. Do you make your own molds? No, we do not make our own molds, but we have a mold maker in Ohio that made most of our molds for us. Many of our designs are indeed our own. You will find mm -hmm. some that you may find duplicated throughout life by other companies. Some of our vases and whatnot are very popular. You'll find those by other companies, the same mold. But most of our molds are our very own mold that our mold makers in Ohio made for us. And they're plaster of Paris? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I open this mold, this mold's a little bit different. All the other molds I've shown you so far mm -hmm. have two parts, a top and a bottom or a front and a back. But this mold's a little bit different because it has a third piece. That third piece is so she can have standing legs. Mm -hmm. Without this third piece, she would not be able to get the undercut for her legs, and she would have to be laying down cow. Mm -hmm. So we'll pour her, what we'll do with her then, the next step is we'll clean out her tail. You can see she already has her belly hollowed out. We'll drill a hole in her mouth. We'll get her all painted up and we'll glaze her, and she will become our little cow creamer. <laughs> And we don't know the secret to the little cow's success, but she has sold here for over 50 years. The lady who painted cows just retired maybe three or four years ago. And she retired at the ripe old age of 92. Wow. She painted cows until she was 92. She painted much of our other gold as well and many of our other decorative items. But she was really known for doing the cows and autographed every one of them along the way. Hmm. Now, before we move over to the fire kiln, I would like to tell you a little quick something about fine china. You may have some fine china at home. Murtaki, Syracuse, Wedgwood, Lennox, any of your English chinas. And you'll know you have fine china because they'll be translucent. The more translucent the wear, the finer the china. Huh. Now, perhaps you use your china regularly, which is what we recommend. But perhaps you have it in a cabinet and it looks very pretty sitting there. And maybe it's looked pretty for the last 10 years. Maybe it's even in a box in the attic or the basement and you're waiting to give it to somebody. You pull it out one day, you finally go to use it, you eat off of it, you serve on it, you wash it, and you go to put it back in your cabinet and perhaps you've noticed 
fine hairline cracks have formed on that wear. That is called crazing and it is from lack of use. Oh. What happens is your fine chinas, the glaze on your fine chinas gets brittle over time without being used. It'll start to dry out. And then when you shock it with that hot water and that hot food, it cracks that glaze and makes those little tiny hairline cracks. Once crazing has occurred, there's nothing that can be done for it. It's going to be there forever. What you'll notice is those lines might start to darken over time. And you can get, you can lighten up those lines. You can soak it in a whole milk bath. And that will help bleach those lines out. It'll hide them. They'll still be there. Now, if you have fine china that you want to start using and you're afraid of the risk of crazing, what we recommend is taking your china and soaking it in room temperature water, slowly increasing that water temperature over time. That will help keep it from shocking that glaze, acclimate it slowly, and then you can start using your china. We recommend you use your china about twice a How year. How long the dip in the water? It doesn't have to be very long. You just want it to get wet, give it 10 minutes like that, and then add a cup of hotter water and a cup of hotter water. Oh, okay. Slowly just get it up to those hot temperatures that you would mm. use for food and washing. Mm. You know, it's all about not shocking it. Oh. You, you want to start very mild and just slowly, slowly increasing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So why does that only happen with China? What about like a, a cow creamer? I mean, why is it well, it would happen with the cow creamer possibly as well because we do use a china, we okay. use a china base. The kaolin is used for making china clays. Okay. But on your stonewares like Fiesta or Foxcraft or any of your heavy stonewares like that, it's a different clay mix yeah. and it's a different glaze base that goes over the top. Mm -hmm. And it's not as, it's not as brittle. It's mm -hmm. a heavier product. It's meant to endure more. Okay. Your chinas are a little bit more fragile product they contain the kaolin and some other porcelains mm -hmm. usually and porcelain is more prone to crazing than stoneware or okay. heavier like terracottas don't usually craze and okay. your gray clays don't usually mm. craze mm -hmm. so if you have your fine china at home get it out use it regularly oh, and if yeah. you just use the top four plates put them on the bottom and use the next four next mm. time a lot of people say that they only keep using the top six or the top mm. ten use them all or at least if you don't use them all and rotate them wash them all every time just even if you just get them under the water and put them in the drain pan just wash them to keep on using them oh, the more okay. you use the longer it will last provided you don't chip it <laughs> yeah because we have to very be careful with china right with exactly so yeah, a I lot of people don't want to use it yeah. they're afraid to use it exactly. but by not using it you're actually doing more damage to it then good. So use it, but use it gently. So now I have a fired and a finished kiln here. We have four gas kilns and four electric kilns. This is one of our gas kilns and this was a gold firing. The first thing you're probably going to notice, this is a very pretty firing. It's oh one of our, our prettiest fires. But you're also going to notice it's really full. Yeah. We like to get as much as we can on a kiln. We want our kiln to be full. We don't want to waste any space. We don't want to waste any gas. We want to be sure to use every square inch of this kiln that we can. Excuse me. However, when firing the kiln, we have to be very careful that no two pieces touch. If any two pieces touch while they're in the kiln, they're going to be fused together forever. Oh, we have two yeah. hectares that got together in the firing. They are now best buds forever. They will not come apart, just like the little bear on the leaf. They are fused together. So not only would we lose one piece, but we would lose two pieces at the same time. Oh, yeah. The next important thing I mentioned is our firing temperature. The gold kilns fired up to 1,350 degrees. Well, to ensure that we reach that temperature every single time, we don't go over or under, we use what's called a pyrometric cone. These little cones, which only cost about two to four cents a piece, ensure the temperature for this entire kiln. What we'll do is we'll take our little cone, we'll line it up in the middle of the kiln right here with this window in the front. We'll close the kiln up and we'll turn our gas on. Can you see it through there? When you look through the kiln, the, the entire kiln truly glows red hot. You really can't see much of anything except this little cone in the middle. What we'll do is, we'll, now we know approximately how long it takes. It takes about four hours to fire the kiln to reach that temperature. 
So after about three and a half, three hours and 45 minutes, somebody's going to come back here and start looking through this kiln. Now, like I said, everything glows red hot, but you can still see that little cone. What we're waiting for is that cone to drop. Mm -hmm. The second that cone drops, we know we've reached our perfect temperature. We shut mm -hmm. the gas off and we'll let the kiln cool overnight. We usually let our kilns cool overnight. That way we don't have to waste our time while we sit here waiting for it. We'll come in in the morning, we'll open the kiln up, and if everyone has done their job right, the entire way through the process, our ware is going to come out with no problems. Now if we underfire this kiln just a little bit, let's say that cone doesn't drop all the way, mm -hmm. the ware is going to come out looking good, but when you touch it, the gold will rub right off on your hand. It is not fired onto the piece. Mm -hmm. So we will have lost an entire layer of gold and a firing. Fortunately, the piece can be refired, repainted and refired, but we still have to take a loss on it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we overfire our wear just a little bit, let's say that cone drops and nobody's been looking through that little window, maybe we're 20 minutes late. The owner always used to say he only ever missed a kiln when he got watching a football game. <laughs> Get back here and it's been down for a little while. We're overfiring. Temperatures continued to go up. The gold's actually going to start to turn brown. It'll take on a tarnished look. And then it might actually even eventually flake off of the piece. If that happens, unfortunately, we've lost the entire piece. It cannot be repainted. It cannot be repaired. We just have to take it as a loss. Better to underfire than overfire. Best to get it right the first time. Hmm. Correct. It's all, all, always about timing. You yeah, just got to keep your it. eye on it. Wow. Yep, we set little timers all around the store to, exactly. so that we know when it's ready. Exactly. Yep. Wow. And you may notice on the kiln here, we do have some floral design decal wear on here. Um, we started doing a floral design. It's a fired on decal. Started doing that back in the 80s when the cost of gold had risen. We have the way we were able to do a, a fired on decal and trim the pieces in gold. Well, the cost of gold came back down. We were able to paint more solid gold pieces. And now the cost of gold has risen again. So now we've introduced a newer purple pansy decal. It's still fired on decal. We trim the pieces in gold. We're using a little bit less gold, but we're still able to provide you with a unique piece from Holly Ross. Hopefully in the future, the cost of gold will go back down. We'll be able to go back to painting some more solid gold pieces again without having to raise our prices because we've compensated for that. We do find that we do believe that you do deserve a bargain since you found us here in the middle of the woods. <laughs> um, so all of our wear is priced at a wholesale price. We do not mark anything up as it goes directly from this kiln right to that showroom table. There is no middleman standing here collecting a fee. Now if you find our wear somewhere else, they've come here to purchase it. We do not send our wear <laughs> out to anybody else. They come here and they purchase it and take it with them. We do have some stores that will come in and occasionally buy wear and take it back to their store in various places, but we do not ship out. Also, free for your enjoyment outside, since it's a beautiful day out, we do have yeah. a swinging bridge and the Woodland Trail down there. It's a very nice walk. It's maybe 15 to 20 minutes down to the lake and back up again. You can walk as far as you want. There are um, benches and picnic tables down there if you have a picnic lunch or just want to sit down there. There's a beautiful lake to sit and it's very nice down there, and it's nice and cool today, at least, with the sun shining. I thank you all for coming back, coming to Holly Ross Pottery, and I thank you for coming for the demonstration. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. You're very welcome.